What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Bob Arum. According to Bob Arum, Tyson Fury may not fight Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua in his next fight, but will head back to the U.S. reveals Bob Arum. Okay. Of course, Bob Arum has claimed that Tyson Fury's next fight could be against someone other than those two fighters that I mentioned. And he had this to say. He says that this depends on a lot of different things. One thing is for sure. Fury belongs in the U.S. He's built up a tremendous, tremendous audience here. If the travel ban is lifted or is not as stringent, I would bring Fury over here to fight a less expensive fighter than a Wilder fight. Maybe we could even do the Wilder fight, but somehow we would have to get it financed. Commenting on possible venues, he added, there was a lot of talk about Fury versus Joshua fighting in Saudi Arabia, but with the oil selling at almost zero a barrel, how are, we, how are the Saudis going to afford a big event? Okay, and he said, but for Fury, except for a Joshua fight, any Tyson Fury fight happens in the United States. The Joshua fight could possibly be seen in the UK or something, or maybe the Middle East locations, but we'll have to see. Again, Joshua still has a contract obligation to fight Pulev, so how's he going to get around that? Now, I covered this uh, already in a previous video, but this new article, the way he's uh, wording it, it's all about the wording. It's what do you mean by what you say? You know, a lot of people word things in different ways. And it seems to me that Bob Arum is trying to use the pandemic to give us a fight that we don't want to see as fans. That's all I see. Damn the, the, you know, he's talking about um, his audience, a huge audience. Okay. His audience has grew since he's beat Wilder. I get it. But that doesn't mean he should stop there and fight guys like uh, uh, um, Pianetta or, uh, or Tom Swartz and guys like that. You know what I mean? Sharifi, those type of guys. We don't want to see those type of fights, especially coming off a damn uh, pandemic uh, um <laughs> uh, quarantine okay we don't want to see that who wants to see Tyson Fury fight somebody that we never seen we've spent all of 2009 watching Tyson Fury fight people we have never ever heard of hell at this point I would rather see a Deontay Wilder 3 than to watch him fight a guy that we never heard of unless it's a top 10 guy you know what I mean now there is an exception you know, I mean, I would love to see him fight a guy that either a, another undefeated guy or or somebody that we have heard of, okay? You, you know, because if you can't give us something or get, can't give us this, at least give us something, okay? So that is what it is. You know, I think uh, Bob Arum knows that speaking of someone else in contract like Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder has his own things to do. He's under a contractual agreement to fight Tyson Fury, so I don't know where he's trying to get out of that at. Because it seems like to me, he was like, well, he may come back over here and fight a guy that 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 that's less expensive. Like, I mean, so where is this coming from? Okay, you could have the Joshua fight because because of the contractual agreement. So where does this nobody or less expensive fighter come from? Where did that possibility come from? I mean, you're looking at a guy that's bound to fight this guy by a contract, you know, and these contracts can be pretty pricey when you break the, or you breach that contract. So I don't know where this is coming from with Bob, but I do know that the, uh, that Tyson Fury has two fights left in uh, the States. And we know that it's a fight that he has to take. So I don't know where this fits in. I mean, I really don't, you know, because uh, it seems like I understand that people are broke, but I also understand that it's a lot of fans that are that is looking forward to continuing the rest of their life to start their life back up again. 
you know, what fueled Americans along with a lot of men and women, you know, sports. That took our mind off stress. That took our mind off world bullshit. That took our mind off politics. It was sports. It entertained us. It gave us something else to look at, to view, to admire, to root for, to hope for. It gave us that. Without that, we got all the rest of the bullshit to worry about. Okay? You know, and him saying, oh, well, he's going to fight someone that's expensive. Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll do a poll just, just in case. Okay? I'll do a poll to see if you guys would rather... You know, Tyson Fury fight Deontay Wilder for a third time or fight a less expensive fighter. I will do that. But the Joshua situation comes in, you know, someone less expensive. That already bumps Joshua out of there, right? Because that's a mega fight. You have the once beaten two time champion of the world, multiple champions. Right? Unified champion of the world, taking on the undefeated lineal ring magazine and WBC champion of the world, Tyson Fury. Yeah. But he didn't rule out the UK, but he knows that that ESPN contract, they're going to want to fight in the US. Tyson Fury already said that, people. Right? We can't forget that. I can't fight. You remember what he said? I can't fight Joshua other than here. Okay, and remember, again, he does not have license, right? So we have to remember that. We have to put that into play. So what Bob Arum's doing, he's helping this particular situation that we're in. We're in a world of stagnant events. Things are on hold. I get it. But, you know, having Tyson Fury to fight a lesser opponent at this point in his career, it doesn't help him any. See, that's why you have fights like Otto Violin, because you got a guy that he rises to the occasion. If it's nothing to really rise to the occasion, you might see a mediocre performance from Tyson Fury. You know, and a lot of people gave Wileen, you know, you know, uh, some props. But, you know, understand Wileen wasn't that guy that he was looking at. He wasn't that guy that he was really all that concerned with. I mean, he was an undefeated fighter, no doubt. So was Tom Swartz. You know, to say the least, he did better than Tom Swartz. Tom Swartz didn't make it out of round two. But I will say this. Otto Vileen used his advantages. You know, he got a huge cut that created a lot of problems. You know, so, but I don't want to see Tyson Fury in a fight like that. And if so, it's going to be with somebody in the top 10. That's my counterpunch on it. You guys tell me what you think. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunched. Peace.